Hi, welcome to the fifth edition of the Index Match Array series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an alphabetized list based off another list of random strings. This is just a straight alphabetized list, so it doesn't pull unique values or it doesn't do anything like that. All it does is it takes in this list and alphabetizes it. Um, so, for instance, if I just get rid of these and I go ahead and type in you'll see that it alphabetizes the two values. And as you can see, um, when I deleted it, it actually blanked out. So you need at least two values for the alphabetical list to work. So for instance, if I type in Zach right here, Zach goes to the bottom. However, if I type in Steve, it should go right above Zach. There's actually quite a few ways to do this. Uh, Excel is fun has a really cool method that pulls out unique IDs. And I'll, I'll actually put a link to that in the description. We're going over two things. We're going to do index match arrays right here. And then we're actually, you'll notice that we have something called names in here. And what that is, is a uh, named range. A named range is basically a formula that sits in the, named ma the name manager rather than a cell. And what that does is allows you to incorporate that range into your formula, just like so. So I hope you enjoy this video. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me at xlsxgeek at gmail.com or you can leave a comment below and I'll try my best to get back to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete this. I suppose the first thing we want to do is create our named range. Okay, so our named range is a dynamic range that will grow and shrink as this list grows and shrinks. And why we have to do that is because this formula cannot handle names that do not fill the entire range, so it can't handle blanks. So what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, something called a count a function. So we're going to just go count a, and I'm just going to go like that, and it brings back five. Okay, good. So because we started the second cell, we actually need it to go to six. So what I'm doing is I'm building a reference right here. So I'm just going to go plus one. It's going to equal six. And then from here, I'm actually going to use something called an indirect function. So I'm going to go indirect tab. My reference text is going to be, uh, obviously we're working within the B range. And I'm just going to assume uh, that these names are not going to leave the B range. So uh, that's a little bit lazy. You can actually make your dynamic ranges where they're both dynamic horizontally and vertically. But for the sake of this video and the sake of time, I'm just going to show you how to do it vertically. So I'm going to go B through B. Uh, actually, I take that back. I'm going to go B2 through B ampersand. And then the count is going to bring me that final cell. OK, so it looks like I forgot the quotation at the end. So I'm going to enter. And OK, it gives me names. That's good. So what I can do is actually just highlight that, copy it. I'm going to go into my name manager, and that's the shortcut for that is Control F3. So I'm going to go new. My computer runs really slowly with the recorder for some reason. Um, OK, and then I'm just going to title this names. I title it name. I think I already have names in there. All right, and then I'm going to delete that. OK. OK, so if I actually go in here and look at this, and just for the sake of this, I think we should press F4. So it's going B2 through B, and then this pulls this. Actually, we don't really want to because we want names to be out of it. So let's go B3, check that, see what it does, and it pulls the names. And what's interesting about Cell's understanding of strings is it actually understands that certain strings are greater than others, or it assigns a certain value to a string. That doesn't mean you can sum a string with another string. It doesn't. What you can do is do really basic operations. So we go, does this equal this? And it's going to give us a false. But we can even take that a step further. Can we, we can go, is that greater than that? And it gives me a true. So um, what can we do with that? Well, we can actually use that within a countif formula. So we can go equals count if our range, and we actually made the range, is going to be name. 
our criteria is going to be quote less than sign quote ampersand name. We go ahead and highlight this and then if you press F9 or I press calculate now you're going to see that we have an array of numbers 2301 and because we uh, because we have the names here and an operator joined with the names there, each of the names is assigned a value. And in this case, our value is less than. It's basically asking how many items is Zach less than, right? Because our criteria was less than. So how many items is Zach less than in this list? And the answer is zero. So if we to pull Zach last, in this case, we would need to use a large function, right? Because we need to find the largest value. So for instance, if I hit calculate now and I go, Alex, Alex is less than how many names in this list? And the answer is three. That's why Alex is assigned to three. What does that mean? So it means we want to use a large function. And if we use the opposite sign here, we would use a small function and it would work just as well. So what we're going to do is use a large, we're going to use the rows function. The rows function basically creates an incrementation um, and we use it for our k values in large and small functions very often. So what I'm going to do is rows d3 through d3. I'm going to close that off. I'm going to make one of these permanent and I'm going to close off my large function. Okay, so what does that do? Well, it's going to uh, it's going to return us the largest number within that list, which actually refers to Alex. So, what can we do with that? Well, we can actually just use our match function, use the array we just made, which is this count if, paste it right there. Match type would be zero. Control Shift Enter two. So then it gives us two. So now all we have to do is use our index. And just like before, we have that, that dynamic range called name, so we can use that. And match will return our row number. It returned a 2. And I can close this off, and it should return Alex. Great. So if I drag this down, it puts everything in the exact order. And what we can do is actually use our if error function to null out all of those number errors. And there you go. So if I keep adding names like Brandon or Joseph or Yankee, you can see that our alphabetized list continues to work. And that's part, partially due thanks to the named range that we used. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions, or in fact, if you have a better way to do it, and there's definitely no one answer for any of these uh, functions that we do, uh, let me know. And uh, feel free, to, if you have any questions, to email me at xlsxgeek at gmail.com.